Hey, what's going on, everyone? My name is Gary Blackwood. Welcome back to the vlog. You guys know the drill. We're not going to mess around here. We're going to get straight into the action. We're playing 5 five ten, and today's very first hand is a bit of a bang. I am in the big blind with King Jack of Hearts. The straddle is not on today, but that's not going to stop the middle blind popping it to $50. Now, I decide to go ahead and put in the re-raise here. My hand is just too strong not to. He thinks for a moment before deciding to make the call. We're going heads up to our very first flop of the day. It is Jack 9-6 with two spades. Very nice to make top pair and I decide to see bet here for $150. The middle blind is going to make the call here to the turn. It is a very nice four of hearts. I've now got top pair with a great kicker and a flush draw and what's more the middle blind now leads out for $350. A little taken aback by this but I decide I've got the best hand very often here and if I don't well I've got out. I decide to move all in for $1175. The middle blind asks for a count that's normally a good sign he thinks it over and he decides to call three thousand dollar pot here out of nowhere in our very first hand of the day and before i can even ask him if he wants to go once or twice the dealer slams down the deuce of clubs on the river i turn my hand over and he starts to turn his over which is never normally a good sign but he's actually just showing me that he had ace seven of spades for a missed flush draw that would have been a really tilting one to lose given that i turned the flush draw myself but this is a great start to the day scoring a full double up I'd actually told the guys that I was in the mood to crush some souls when I sat down and I'm already delivering on that. All right, ready to continue crushing souls when 20 minutes later I'm on the button with pocket queens. Again, no straddle in this hand, but the player I've just stacked is proving himself to be a very, very fun, fun player. And he puts in the raise again to $50. The cutoff is going to put in the re-raise to $175. He's not a pro, but he's a very, very good semi-pro. So I know he's going to be isolating quite wide here, as he should be. Now, cold forebedding and getting it in is obviously fine, but I decide to do something a little unorthodox and cold call this three bet i know this is not a great play theory wise but in the nicest way possible i'd very much like to keep the opener in the pot the risk of either players ace 10 or king jack out flopping me is worth the reward in my opinion so i go ahead and make the call hoping this doesn't blow up in my face part one of the master plan goes accordingly when the original oper decides to just call got exactly what i wanted heading to the flop here which is jack high this is now going exactly to plan action is on the cutoff who decides to see bet here for 225 dollars my option now is to either call or raise and i decide to go with raise the other player is never folding a jack or a nine probably calling with all his gut shots and the original razor has those top pairs that we spoke about and if he's got me beat well then it's just a cooler so i put in the raise to six hundred dollars action is back on the original razor unfortunately he makes a very quick fold a little disappointing to see that was hoping he had like queen jack specifically the cutoff is looking quite strong with his body language here i'm already sure of what's coming and yep he moves all in for another $750 on top. Really don't love it given how strong he's looking, but of course I'm not folding. I make the call. He asks me if I want to go once or twice. Always happy to go twice. He starts to turn over his hand and he's got pocket king. The master plan was going so well up until this point. No luck on the first run out. No luck on the second run out. Sigh, the double up we got in the first 10 minutes has been given back to the table. The only saving grace for me here is that if I just four bet and got it in pre-flop, the result would have almost certainly been the same all right next up i'm in early position and look down at pocket jacks lots of really good starting hands so far today there's no straddle this hand but there is a very very fun fun player in the big blind so i put in the pre-flop raise to 75 dollars yep you heard that right an intentional 7.5x pre-flop raise there's also a pretty fun fun player in the middle blind who makes the call first and then the very very fun fun player makes the call as well really good spot here in position versus both players heading to a flop which is queen 74 with two clubs not a disaster but not in love with the overcard either both players check it on over to me and i would see bet here versus one player no problem at all but with two players it's just a little more likely i'm not ahead so i decide to check it back and control the size of the pot the turn rolls off the eight of clubs flush gets there but i do pick up the flush draw myself with the jack of clubs the big blind takes a stab here for 130 dollars. i am not scared of this guy one bet i know he's super wide so i don't take long before making the call action is now on the middle blind kind of hoping he just folds but he does decide to call as well a little concerned now that my jacks are no good heading to the river which is the ace of spades another overcard to the board which i really really don't love action is on the big blind and he decides to keep betting he fires out for 330 now there's lots to consider here on the one hand he's extremely capable of having any two cards
cards here. That's not an exaggeration. But on the other hand, it's a really wet board and there are a lot of hands that beat me and there's a guy behind still to act. But as I'm thinking about my decision, the guy behind starts looking away from the table and holding his cards up as if he's ready to fold. So I kind of don't have to worry about him anymore. Pretty sure he is going to make that fold. After a minute or two, I decide to put my cape on and make the call. The middle blind makes a very quick fold and it's music to my ears when the big blind says, I missed. Absolutely delighted. Oh, wait, hang on. He's turned his hand over. He's got ace five offsuit. No, buddy, you haven't missed. You've got top pair. He looks just genuinely stunned when I tap the table and muck my hand. He turns to the middle blind and says, I was going for the straight while pointing it as five. As life tilting as this it is, I really, really don't think this is malicious. He was a very nice guy overall. I think he genuinely thought that he didn't have the best hand and he was bluffing with a river top pair, but that doesn't help me feel any less tilted. All right, so I'm down about 1500 bucks at this point. Lots of small pots going against me before I manage to double up in a ridiculous PLO double board bomb pot hand. I'm actually not going to include it though because long story short, the guy who lost didn't know the rules. The regs here are really good at encouraging novices to sit out of these PLO hands if they're not completely confident in how to play them. But this guy insisted he wanted to play. He thought he had a straight, but he had just nine high and shoved the river. I called him off and I scooped in a very, very nice pot. Despite this though, there's been a bunch of smaller pots going against me so not having a great day overall next hand of note i'm in the middle blind with a couple of red tens there have been two limps from the cutoff and the button for 20 dollars because the straddle is on before i raise it on up to 150 dollars the only player to make the call is the button he is the very fun fun player in the game we go heads up to a flop of nine seven six rainbow very good flop for my tens here no over cards and lots and lots of worse hands in my opponent's range so i decide to bet and i decide to bet big i throw out 200 dollars the button is not put off by this he decides to make the call to the turn we go how about that the eight just slides on in there to give me the straight now this guy loves to bluff but given the action it's very hard for him to start bluffing here if i check so i decide to keep betting for value hoping he's got two pair or a worse straight i bet out for five hundred dollars now he's also the kind of guy who's going to think ace nine is a good hand here so i'm really confident that he's going to continue but he tanks for a while looking back at his hand then the board then his hand then then the board before eventually he folds this is really quite a bad beat here that he's folded he must have had like a fourth pair hand or something but maybe we'll get him next time all right, moving on now. Still not a whole lot going my way today. There's lots of small pots going against me, but things looking on the up now as I'm in the straddle with pocket aces. Finally, under the gun is limp for $20. The big blind calls as well. No cheap flops for you guys. I put in the raise to $120. Under the gun is going to make the call here. The big blind is going to call as well. Really nice spot with almost $400 in the middle, but the flop comes down 765 rainbow. This is a disastrous flop here. Action is on me and I decide to just check this is not a three street scenario and both these guys connect super well with this board given the action and there are a lot of bad turns and rivers so i think small ball is the way to go here i'm happy to see the limper check it back to the turn it is a straight completing nine about as bad as can be such an anticlimactic spot here with these aces the big line decides to bet out for 200 dollars. i can't see how we can call here especially with another player behind so i just sigh and make the fold the limper actually makes the call here and when the queen hits the river the the big blind bombs it for $700 and takes it down. As he is stacking up his chips, I have a very heartwarming interaction with him. I had pocket aces there. <laughs> Do you believe me? <laughs> <laughs> okay, next up, I'm in the small line with pocket deuces. We've got Hoodie Allen in the cutoff. He's a well-known musician, quiet guy, but really friendly when spoken to. He puts in the raise. This is going to get called by the button, and I go set mining with my deuces in the small blind. The big blind comes along as well. He's our fun, fun player who's featured a lot today. We go four ways to the flop. Can we find a deuce? Yes, we can. What a great spot this is with bottom set here. Tough day so far, but the tides might finally be turning with this one. Now, it checks all the way around to the button, and he takes a stab for $70. I just want to give a very quick shout out here to my buddy Andrea for roasting me on Discord with this one. I wanted to keep the big blind in the pot, so I decided to just call but it's not like the big blind is going to fold a pair anyway and I'm missing out on so much top pair value and straight draw value from the button and I'm out of position so just calling here is a bit of a travesty in hindsight the big blind actually folds his hand to make matters worse but Hoodie Allen is going to make the call in the cutoff we're going to go three ways to the turn here it's an ace bit of an action killer if either player has a king we check it on over to the button who doesn't take long before checking back all right to the river it's a pretty safe looking 10 
I don't see any point in checking here. There are very few bluffs from either player, so I bet out for $300. I chose this sizing because I'm mainly targeting a king, not many top pairs for either player here. Hoodie Allen takes his time before making the call. That's one player to pay me off. Am I going to get called twice here? I am not going to get a call from the second player. Instead, he raises. What on earth? He makes it $800 to go. How the hell has he found a raise here? And for such a small size, can he ever be bluffing here for this size? Does he ever have worse for value? Is he really the type of player that's going to stab on the flop with Queen Jack? So many questions swirling around in my head, but it's $500 more. Even though I feel like I'm almost certainly just been backdoored, I just sigh and make the call. Hoodie Allen gives us a look that says, you two are idiots and folds his hand. The button turns over. Yep, just the backdoored nuts. This is my own fault for not raising on the flop. Correctly punished, some might say, but that doesn't make losing this hand any easier. Now, I'm going to tangle with this guy once again very soon. I'm under the gun with Ace Queen offset and raise it on up to $60. Classic live poker. This is going to get called in three spots by the button, the small blind, and the straddle. The straddle is the guy from the last hand. We go four ways to the flop, which is ace high. Really good start here, making top pair. Lots of value to be had, so I bet out here for $125. The button decides to call. The small blind folds. Action now on the straddle, who decides to call as well. Pretty good spot here. I'm ahead really often, looking for a clean turn card, but it's a board pairing nine. I don't think I can bet this card, so I decide to check. The button also checks. Happy to see this. I don't think he'll be trapping ever. The river is a very safe looking deuce. Action on the straddle now, who did take a stab on the flop with Queen Jack in the last hand, but overall is not the blasting type. So when he bets out for $375, I am really, really concerned. I don't think he'll be betting this big with Ace Jack, so I don't think he's got worse for value. He doesn't seem like the big river bluff type, and he is betting to two people. So this feels really nitty. Maybe should just always call in this spot, but I tell myself he's not bluffing. He He's not value betting worse. I'll save myself nearly $400 here. And I go ahead and make the fold. Unfortunately, the button also snap folds, so we don't even get to see what he had. I guess it doesn't matter, though. If I'm happy with my play, then that's all that matters. Having a pretty tough day overall here, but I'm not helping myself. I'm playing too loosely. This is actually something I'm going to talk about in detail in the next vlog. But yeah, here today, not helping myself one bit. Okay, moving on now, and I'm in the middle blind with pocket deuces for the second time tonight. The button is limp for $20. The small blind calls as well. I call for an extra $15. The big blind calls for an extra $10, and the straddle checks. We're going multi-way to the flop here. It is ace, seven, deuce. Another set of deuces. Let's hope this one works out better than the last. It's actually the straddle who starts the betting here. He leads out for $35. The button makes the call, and I've learned my lesson from the last time. Nobody is backdooring me on the cheap here. I raise it on up to $100. $150, trying to get max value from any ace x in either player's range. The straddle makes the fold, but the button, he sticks around and makes the call. The turn is a four, some pair plus gut shots now possible, and I decide to bet again for $250. Now, my opponent has only got around 500 bucks in front of him at the moment, so theoretically, shoving is probably the play, but in live poker, I think being able to milk your opponents is much higher EV in a lot of situations, hence this non-all-in size. Also, no harm done as the button does the shoving for me. He moves all in for $500 total. I, of course, make the call. The river is a three. If he turns over ace five, I'm going to flip the goddamn table here but when I show my hand he sighs he nods and he mucks all right finally getting a little back here it hasn't been the best of days and I really really don't help myself here in this next hand it's a pillow double board bomb pot full disclosure I butchered it and was too tilted to write it down it's so rare that I get tilted playing poker these days but today was just one of those rare rare occasions in this hand I bet the river with the third nut full house on one board and a pair of sixes on the other board and when my opponent potted the river I made the cardinal sin of of calling it off for a chop only for him to not not all over me completely my own fault i used to really really suck at these PLO double board bomb pots but i play them much better nowadays after doing some studying today was a throwback to the old days i guess all right, back to No Limit now. It's late in the day and a smartly dressed businessman has just sat down in the game. He asks what the cap is. We tell him $1,500 and he nods and sits down with 5K. We all agree that the cap is no more just for tonight and we all top up our stacks one by one. The pros, the non-pros, we all top up to as much as we want. Next up, I'm in the small blind and look down at Jack-10 offsuit. I put in the race to $125 because our new friend has decided to double straddle to $40. 
He makes the call. We're going to go heads up to the flop here. It is king, queen, six with two hearts. I've got an open-ended straight draw, and I can take the pot down here with just jack high really often if I bet. So I bet out for $100. We're about 4K deep here. So as he's making the call, I am praying for one of my six nutted outs. But the turn is an offsuit jack. I've got third pair and some showdown value. So I decide to check to my opponent, hoping for a free river card. But the double straddle is going to take a stab here. He bets out for $300. I tank for a little bit, but there's no decision to be made here. I make the call, hoping to improve on the river, but it's a very bricky offsuit four. I sigh, I check, fully expecting to lose the hand, but the double straddle thinks for a few seconds before checking back. I announce I have a jack, which is actually good. He shakes his head and mucks, and I drag in this pot. Not a huge pot by any means, only stuck about $2,000 now for the day. All right, next up, the straddles have all gone. We're back to boring old 5-5-10. I am in the big blind with Queen-10 offsuit. The button is a young pro who raises to $35. It falls around to me, and I, of course, defend my hand. We're going to go heads up to the flop here. It is Jack, 9, Deuce, Rainbow. Good start for me here with the open ender. The button decides to see bet for $30, and I decide to just always raise my hand here with this much equity. I make it $150 to go. This is not going to get an immediate fold from my opponent. The button makes the call. To the turn, it's a nine really annoying turn card because I don't really have any turn trips in my range and now my only value is quads jack nine and pocket deuces now when your value range gets really narrow you favor your highest equity bluffs to go along with it so I give up here with a hand like 10 seven suited but with this open ender with the overcard to the jack I decide to bet again this time for $290 I can still win the pot right here and if I get called I've still got some outs going to the river the button does in fact decide to make the call we're heading to the river in this very bloated pot and it's a complete brick my draw misses and i'm left with just queen high it's really unlikely queen high is going to win the pot here so i decide to just follow through and try and make him fold a weak jack something like that he's got about two thousand dollars behind here so i think shoving is just a bit too big instead i go with 775 dollars as my size he takes one look back at his hand and makes a very quick call. I turn over my queen high and he shows me 9-7 of clubs for turned trips. I really like my line here on the flop and the turn, but when he calls twice, it's really, really unlikely he's going to fold. So I think we should just consider giving up here on the river. After this hand, I decided I wasn't playing well at all. Plus, I was a bit tilted. Quick spoiler alert, this moment right here is a bit of a turning point for me in the trip. I'll explain what I mean in the next episode. But unfortunately, that's going to do it for this week, guys and girls. I lost $2,950. Didn't run great, but didn't play great either. Thanks as ever for watching. Until next time, take it easy.